As quilters, we all have our favorite aspects of quilting, from the fabric to the pattern to working with the fabric and cutting and putting it together and piecing and planning how the design is going to lay out. There's so much involved. And then when we finish the quilt top, we get to work with the batting and the backing and come up with ideas and how it's going to all come together. Now, we all have our favorite parts and our not-so-favorite parts. And I have found that the machine quilting, the final step to get my quilt finished, has been put on the back burner for a while. So it's time to get caught up. And besides the fact that we're in week two of a hundred degree temperature, even with air conditioning, it's hot. And I don't want to sit with a lap full of fabric. So I am going to base some quilts. And that's one of the great quick projects that I can get done and get a lot of quilts finished and be ready when I can sit down and do some more quilting and I'll have them finished very quickly. But there are some steps that's going to make it quicker than others, and I'm going to show that to you today. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. And, you know, we, we do our basting from the traditional hand basting to pin basting, and now we have spray adhesive basting. So we're going to talk about that a bit, and I'm going to do a demonstration for you. I have a baby quilt that uh, I need to get done. And I'm going to show you the steps I take in order to do the uh, the spray basting. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm really anxious to have you here and to share this with you and give you some tips. So if you decide to try this, if you haven't yet, then you will definitely want to get some of these pointers and techniques in order to make it as easy as possible. So let's go ahead and do some quilting. And please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you join me in the future. All right, now it's time. Let's get started on some quilting. You may remember this quilt from a while back. This is my um, a low volume and batik baby quilt. It's a super simple pattern. It's actually a free pattern. Um, I'll go ahead and link the uh, the video up above so that you can go back and take a look at it. And those the description in that video will have the link for this pattern. But I. It's a very easy quilt to finish, and I'm at a point where I have a pile of unfinished quilt tops, and I thought, all right, I need to get this done. So before I do this, what I want to show you is how I baste my quilts. And I have my quilt top ready to go. It needs a little pressing because it's been folded up. Here's my quilt bag. I think that's just such a pretty color. Look at that. The, the turquoise, the blues, the aquas, I, I just think it's going to be pretty, especially with all these colors. Ah, it'll be great. And then I have my, uh, my quilt batting. Now, there's a lot of different things about batting that, that you can consider. And for me, I buy what is the best price. This is what I'm using today. This is something that I purchased um, in quantity. I, I used to buy my quilt batting by the size per quilt that I was making and I would always end up with bits and pieces and I'd have tubs of small pieces and I'm piecing those pieces together to make larger pieces and it just got crazy. So I started buying it off the roll. I'm not to the point that I buy an entire roll because I don't have room for that but I'll buy you know eight to ten yards of these these uh, big bats of uh, quilt batting that you can get in the stores. And you can do it online. A lot of places will ship it to you online as well. But what I want to show you about your quilt batting is the directions. I don't know if you can read this. This is awfully small writing, but there's always a spot here that tells you how to use it, their recommendation. And this is, let's see, it's a breathable. This one I think is 100% cotton. I know that's on here somewhere, but it's lightweight. I always go with lightweight. And it says it's good for quilts and wall hangings. Low profile loft. That means lightweight. That means when you quilt it, you're not going to get the big puffy look you're going to get a flatter look. You'll still have the dimension, but if you like the big, puffy um, kind of uh, look or exposure, the way it looks from the side, you get that dimension. Don't go lightweight because that's going to give you something completely different. 
I prefer it primarily because when we were living in on an island, it was hot, and I loved my quilts, but I didn't want to use the heavy batting, so I just got used to uh, using the lightweight. It's so easy to quilt on. It's so much lighter to to quilt with because you don't have all that weight in your lap. So that's a decision for you. So low loft. Now the shrinkage is two to three percent, which is pretty normal. There's always a bit of shrinkage simply by the way we quilt and sew it. It sort of cinches things together. And that's a good thing because then we get our quilting dimension on the top. And when I say dimension, that means that the fabric isn't perfectly flat. It, it, it kind of rises and falls between where the quilting seams and lines are. You want a distance of um, 8 inches, no more than 8 inches, between your quilting lines. So if you, you quilt here, you can come all the way over about 8 inches. And this is going to hold together. Back in the old days, you would have to quilt much more closely because the batting could pull apart. But the way these, I want to say needle punch, I don't know if that's how all of these are done, but they put it together in a way not unlike um, how felting is done. And, you know, there are different methods that are used, but this holds together really, really well. And then it says um, they've got a guarantee, and yeah, it does say this is needle punched. So that, that gives it the extra strength. It's less apt to do a lot of stretching. So pay attention when you buy your batting, what you're using, and how it's going to work with what you want. Are you going to get the results that you want? So I am going to go ahead and base this, and I'm going to use a spray base. And I'm going to do a demo for you on a small scale, on basically just a small square, so I can show you the whole thing. And then what I'll do is I'll get this partially basted. That'll probably be in the next video. I'll get this partially basted, do the final with you to show you how it works, and then we'll do the quilting. So this is kind of a, a multi-stage process as quilting is. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to show you how to do this. You're going to love it. It is so easy. Once your quilt top is finished, the next step is to quilt it, and then it'll be complete. Now, in order to do that, there's a couple steps before you actually do the quilting. What we need to do is get our quilt sandwich together, which is our backing and our batting, which I have a piece of that right here, and then our quilt top. Now, I'm just using small scrap pieces so I can show you the entire piece rather than um, just a part of the quilt. And then I'm going to do an actual demo with the quilt that I'm going to be quilting. So this just gives you an overview. The couple things I want to show you. Um, there are three ways that you can base your quilt. You can hand baste it, which is the most traditional method. You can use safety pins, and I did safety pins for years. And then I discovered the spray adhesive, the quilt batting, uh, or the quilt basting adhesive, which is fantastic, and I love it. And that's what I want to show you today. I do sometimes still occasionally use the pins, um, depending on the circumstances, but primarily this is what I use. Now the first thing when using the spray based is I want to show you what we have here. Um, the 505 Temporary Adhesive is what I use. There are other brands out there now, and um, I've not used them. This is what I started with. It's a great product. This is what I stay with, and I do recommend it. It's something that I use all the time. This is one of the smaller size cans. There's this, and then it comes in a larger size. I usually buy the big one, but I needed some quick when I purchased this, and I just ran to the store and bought what they had. Um, I can get a few medium quilts done with this can, but when I get the bigger can, let's see, this is like six ounces. I think the big one is maybe 12, 11 or 12 ounces, and I can easily get three to five good size quilts. My favorite part about it is not only that it's quick and easy, but that if I get interrupted and I have to set the project aside, as after it's already adhered and everything is, is together, I can fold that quilt up, set it aside, go on to the next project, come back to it, and it's still good to go. There may sometimes be some wrinkles around the outer edges I have to fuss with, but for the most part, the, the adhesive holds everything intact, which is fantastic. 
So this is what I'm going to use and what I want to show you is there's a couple steps along the way when you are getting ready to baste your quilt. The first thing is because we're using a spray, I want something to protect the background. This is a glue, it's an adhesive, it's washable, so if you overspray onto whatever surface you're using, you can wash it off. But I would rather just let it collect onto something that I can either discard or wash or use again. In this case, it's an old sheet. Now, ideally, even a piece of flannel or a flannel sheet works great because then the fabric, your backing, is going to be less apt to move around. This, this fabric that you're putting it up against is going to hold this fabric in place, which is what's really, really nice. Now, when I, I use this backing, I want to have it a far enough away, at least probably 12 inches around the outer edge, because there can be some overspray with this. And I'm just going to turn this upside down because I'm going to mix it before we use it, and that'll sort of let everything sort of settle into one spot. So I have my backing in place, and you'll notice I have a bit of, of some lint pieces. Now if I were to come in and put my batting right on top, what I want to show you here, and then fold this over, you can see where these little bits will show through. Not strongly, but once it's quilted, it definitely will. I think I saw some pieces over here too. And it's probably not being picked up in the camera, but right there you'll see a shadow. And it looks like a stain or that that piece is dirty. So always take your time to get all the threads out no matter what method you're using and these are going to show through um, no matter what you're doing putting your quilt together or how you're using it so i always make sure everything is clean now the first thing we want to make sure our sandwich is sized correctly if we're using a small quilt in here if let's say this is a wall hanging or a pillow and we're going to say maybe a 14 inch square then I want to make sure my batting is an inch or two bigger and my backing is also a couple inches bigger as you're quilting the fabrics all tend to cinch together a little bit that's the nature of the quilting because when we sew multiple layers together with our stitching it brings everything closer together now the top fabric is less apt to move but the under two layers are going to slip in a little bit and even with the adhesive it's not that it's moving it's just that that fabric is adjusting so we want to make sure that we have enough to keep everything straight and have plenty along the outside edge to finish our quilt when we want to uh, get to the point where we square it up now the other thing about this is you always want to mix it you want to have ventilation so either if you're inside you want to open a window and turn on a fan and that way you're going to um, prevent yourself from sneezing coughing any you know having any kind of reaction because it, it can get a little overwhelming you know if you've ever used a can of spray paint you get that that overspray that you know I don't want to say effervescence but whatever that is that gets in the air the little particles and you don't want to do that you don't want to be breathing that now because I have this outer layer if I were doing this on the floor this would protect my floor the other thing I'll do is I'll do it on the wall. I'll tape the backing to the wall and let it hang, and I'll get an old beach towel um, and put it on the floor and then, you know, do the uh, do the spray from there. So whatever works for you, the, the key thing is to be safe, have, have your area well ventilated, and protect whatever you don't want to potentially get overspray of the glue. Now, if you're in your sewing room, definitely cover your sewing machine or, or things of that nature. The spray doesn't go far, but it does take a little bit of time to settle. By the time you're finished with your quilt, you're going to be okay, but we just don't want to take any chances. 
The other thing is, if you look at the surface of your batting and the surface of your fabric, your fabric is nice and smooth. Your batting sort of has nooks and crannies. So when you spray this, you're not going to necessarily get an even spray on the batting. I always spray directly on the fabric and then place my batting accordingly. I also, whoops, if I can get this open, there we go. I also want to make sure that I've got my can ready to go and I aim towards the center of the quilt. I don't want to get this outer edge and spray outward because then I'm going to be, you know, sending glue off in directions where it doesn't need to be. Now usually, and maybe it's just on the larger can, there's a spot that you line your nozzle up with, but I don't see it on this one. I have used this one before, um, but it's been a while since I, I have. But yeah, I, I know on my bigger can, and it could be that now the, the reason for that spot was to line your nozzle up. And it could be now that the way they're making the cans, that's no longer required. So if it's not there, I'm not going to worry about it. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to spray from an outer edge towards the middle and you don't need a lot. Don't hold it down close and, and get this really tight glue pattern. What you want to do is be at about 12 inches away so that the glue can settle and spread itself throughout the quilt. If you're going like this, that's the only place where the glue is going to be and you want it to be spread out all over. So we're going to pretend this is a larger quilt and I'll start at one corner and I'm just just going to do that. Let's see if I can do this left handed. And that's it. That's all we need. And you can't really see on the camera, but I can look up close and I can see where the glue is settled. It actually adds it, it's it's a bit lifted from the fabric so you can see it on top. And then now I'm going to put my batting on here. If this were a larger piece quilt, I just need to get some of these threads off, I would fold my batting in half and place it along the center. And then I would go ahead and lay this out using my hand to spread that and to evenly place it across my quilt. Now we don't want to pull corners. We don't want to stretch pieces. We want to lay it down flat and then smooth it out. Nothing needs to be stretched. And then look at this. It doesn't go anywhere. Just that little bit of spray holds it well. Now I didn't put a lot on the corners because I spray from the corners in and that's okay. I don't need to worry about that. If you have a particular corner that's giving you trouble then just Give it a quick spray and put it down if that's important to you. The other thing now is let's say I'm going to turn it this way. I don't want the batting off this edge. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pull this up and I'm going to replace it. Now I can put my hands here and notice it doesn't stick to me. I can feel the adhesive, but it doesn't stick to my hands, which is awesome. So we are going to pull this out. Oh my goodness, I got some threads in there, didn't I? And we'll turn this over. So I'm going to set this right inside the edge and put it right there like that. Get rid of these little threads. I don't know what I got into. Okay, and then uh, we'll leave that wrinkle there because I'm going to show you how that works. So we're going to replace it. We're going to run it down the center. And when I'm basting my quilts, I always go out the four sides, you know, the compass points, so to speak, north, south, east, and west. And then I work the corners in. Now, we have a little bit of a bump there. That's okay. We're just going to lift this out, not stretch it. I'm just going to let it lay naturally the direction that it wants to go. And so now I can give it a good press and we're all adhered. Everything's fine. We're going to stay together and we're good to go. There it is. So that just see how easy this is. That's the part that I love. 
safety pins um, can be very effective, but you have to put a safety pin approximately every five inches or every hand width away. And that's a lot of safety pins. And if you're using a large quilt and you're doing it on the floor, that's really tough on your knees and on your wrist. So for me, this is fantastic. I can do it on the tabletop or I can do it on a wall. Um, I really, really appreciate that. Now, let's say you have a really big quilt and it's hard for you to, to put the adhesive on it. You, you can put the adhesive on the quilt, say, outside. Take it out and put it in the grass and spray it. Fold it, bring it in, and place it. So there are some options. Once you try it the first time, you'll get an idea of how it works and what you can do. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pretend this is sort of a rectangle, rectangular pillow, and which is this is the wrong side. So I have my right side up. Because we have, remember now, our quilt batting, our quilt backing is right side down with our batting, and then our quilt is right side up. Now, if this were a long piece, I would do this. I would spray this half and come over. Well, and let's just go ahead and do that for the sake of, of showing you. So again, on the outside, and I'm spraying to the center. And just a quick spray. Don't hover over, don't hold it in place, just let it spray and keep your hand moving. Okay, now see, and I can smooth that out really, really nice. And you can tell when I go to pick this up, it, it wants to catch right there because that little bit of glue is holding it right where it needs to be. So now I'm gonna come to this side, kind of miss that corner there. And same thing, I'm going to use my hand to feed it out, lay it in place. And now we have a quilt that is all basted and I can roll it around, I can do with it what I will. So when I get under my machine, I can get in there and I can do this and everything stays put. It's nice and smooth, I don't get wrinkles nothing that's going to interfere with my quilting and I'm going to fold this up and put it away because I can't get to it right now and maybe in a week or two I come back to it and I open it up and I just give it a, a quick hand and there it is it's beautiful I've actually had a quilt that I had spray basted for two years <laughs> and it took me a while to get to it and like I said the only thing that I had a problem with were the edges because I don't put a lot of glue on the edges intentionally just because I don't want a lot of overspray and it's unnecessary it you know we start generally quilting from the center out or from the center edge and go to the other side and so the edges get caught up in the quilting over time and they they work fine I don't worry about that now these are um, adhered here but I guess when I say edges I mean the corners um, and that's it. So that's all you need to do to baste your quilt and then we're ready to go. You just pick this up and you, you go to quilt just like you ordinarily would. Now a couple things about this. As you can see it's fast and easy. It's very efficient and it's very effective. What I particularly like is the repositionability of it. Is that the word? I'm not sure if I just made that up. I may be an extra syllable or two in there. But you can easily move this around if you need, if you need to. Um, one of my pet peeves about using anything with an adhesive, I've had problems in the past with um, what do I say, like interfacings and things like that, or stabilizers. You press them on and then you go to sew and it gums up my needle. The little bits of glue will get caught either on the edges of my needle or in the eye of the needle. And then I can't use it. And it's so frustrating. Um, first off, when that happens, that means we're not following the directions properly because most products shouldn't do that. And I have found that it's my nature not to use a hot enough iron. And sometimes they require steam. So always read the directions and you'll avoid that. But this is no problem. Unless you put a ton of it on there. If you hold your, your can and you're doing one of these, you know, you're not spray painting a chair. We're just putting a little bit of glue um, just to lightly touch the surface in order to hold things in place. So that's kind of the the the, the crux of it and when, what I appreciate. Now, 
if you've ever used a can of, um, what do I want to say, any kind of spray paint before, when you're finished using it, one of the best things to do is to hold it upside down. Actually, what I would do is I would take this outside, hold it upside down, and spray until the glue doesn't come out. That way, I'm clearing out the line and the nozzle, so I'm not going to get any glue buildup. But you can see, I think you can see up close here, I have had this around for a while, and I've used it a few times, and there's no glue buildup in there. So while I do that as a precaution, this is a can I've pretty much only used inside, so I haven't done that method um, simply because it, it really isn't an issue. But if that's something you're concerned about, then you can definitely uh, use that to that method to clean out your nozzle. And I think that's it. So I do want to get some quilting done. I'm going to get the actual quilt out that I'm, I'm quilting today, but I wanted to give you this overview on how to do the basting, how to use the spray, the best methods that work for me, and I hope you give it a try. It's a wonderful product. And yes, the link is down below. And I, I do get a small commission if you purchase it. And so I'd appreciate if you use my affiliate link. And it doesn't change your price. It's just my recommendation to you. And nobody is paying me to tell you about this. So I just want you to know that I'm sharing this with you because it's a good product and it's something that I use all the time. And as much quilting as we're doing together, I want to uh, want to share this with you. All right, so we're finished here for now, and we know how to quilt, or excuse me, we know how to uh, baste our quilt the easiest way, and this will be a breeze. I hope you enjoyed this and learned a lot. Thanks for watching.